as if this Tulsi Hillary Clinton beef hasn't already brought about enough crazy developments. This development might just take the cake. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So as uh, Tulsi Gabbard decided to call out Hillary Clinton in response to Hillary Clinton asser asserting that Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian asset, um, she has gotten a lot of support. She's gotten about 208,000 likes on her tweet responding to Hillary Clinton. She's gotten, a, she's gotten almost 80 to 90,000 followers on Twitter since that day. Um, and the out, outpour of support from both the left and the right um, has been kind of, it's not that surprising because I guess the one thing that unites both the left and the right is their disgust for Hillary Clinton. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> like it's, it's, that's the one unifying factor. And I believe that solidarity probably isn't only existent in the United States. I'm pretty sure countries and people all around the world have such a disdain for Hillary Clinton that they were all cheering loudly when Tulsi Gabbard called her out on Twitter. Now, in addition to everybody and their mom showing love to Tulsi Gabbard, an unlikely person finally comes out and says Tulsi's name for the very first time in this entire election. And that person is Donald J. Trump. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has come out to defend Tulsi against Hillary. I know, I know. Let's read the tweet and talk about it. <laughs> so now Crooked Hillary is at it again. She is calling Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard a Russian favorite and Jill Stein a Russian asset. As you may have heard, I was called a big Russia lover also, <laughs> as you may have heard. I'm, I'm sure he meant that sarcastically. Actually, I do like Russia. I, I do like Russian people. I like all people. Good caveat. Uh, Hillary's gone crazy. I'm going to read that again. So now crooked Hillary is at it again. She is calling Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard a Russian favorite and Jill Stein a Russian asset. As you may have heard, I was called a big Russia lover also. Actually, I do like Russian people. I like all people. Hillary has gone crazy. And there you have it, people. I don't, I don't know how else to say it, but Donald Trump has defended both Tulsi Gabbard and Jill Stein. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying that. Now, let's be clear. It's not for like, because he's like doing this altruistically. Donald Trump is not just some magnanimous president who's thinking about the best interests of Tulsi Gabbard and Jill Stein in the left movement. That's not what he's doing. Like, it's, it's for completely and totally selfish reasons. But when it comes to politics, sometimes the reason why something is done isn't as important as the action being done uh, for pragmatic purposes. But in this particular situation, the intention does matter. And I'm going to explain to you why. Do you know, yeah, like, like I said, he did it selfishly. And some people would say, well, why, why would it be selfish? And what's the importance of that? Everybody, he has realized the most common sense conclusion that I would think at this point, most people who are objective in their perception have already came to the conclusion of. Listen, there is literally no downside in defending Tulsi here. There's none. Like, there is no downside in critiquing Hillary Clinton. Oh, but it gets better. There is absolutely no downside in defending Tulsi Gabbard against Hillary Clinton, especially when Hillary Clinton starts it. In fact, there is only gain that can be made. That's it. You will not lose any support whatsoever for the, there was not one single person that was going to 
vote for say if Nina Turner was running for office there was not one single person that was going to vote for Nina Turner and said I'm not voting for Nina Turner how dare she defend Tulsi Gabbard against Hillary Clinton not one single person who was going to vote for Andrew Yang decided I'm not voting for Andrew Yang because of that one time he defended a congresswoman a veteran a presidential candidate from slanders of a woman who couldn't beat Donald Trump not one single objective voter has ever thought to themselves, well, if you critique Hillary Clinton, well, then I'm just not going to vote for you. The only people who would say that are those who have already voted for Hillary Clinton or who are always going to vote for Hillary Clinton or a carbon copy of Hillary Clinton. There's nothing to lose. The only people mad at people who critique Hillary Clinton are Hillary Clinton sycophants. And yet, only um, as far as politicians are concerned, like popular politicians are concerned, Nina Turner, Andrew Yang, Marion Williamson, Beto O'Rourke, bruh. Beto O'Rourke, that's a different conversation. We're going to talk about that. But yes, even Beto O'Rourke and Donald Trump. Oh, and Jill Stein, my apologies. That's who's come out and defended Tulsi. Which, once again, isn't all that surprising. You have the President of the United States from the Republican Party. You have... Nina Turner, her friend, of course, but an independent in her, in, in her mind and in her practices. You have Beto, member of the establishment. You have Marion Williamson, member of the world <laughs> and in the in, end of the spirit realm. You have Andrew Yang, who is, I would say, a member of the corporate world, although he is an outsider. Um, in, in politics, he's still a member of the corporate world. He has a different way of viewing things. And then you have um, Don, uh, uh, excuse me. Oh, I'm missing. I'm missing one person. I feel like. Oh, then you have Jill Stein, member of the Green Party, who I'm pretty sure would consider herself a democratic socialist. So you have members from the left, the right, the middle, partisan, one way or the other, and independent, all coming to defend Tulsi, who doesn't fit in the box. Why? Once again, there is no downside. Just from a strategic standpoint, it is, it's at this point, stupid to not defend Tulsi. It is legitimately stupid. I don't know how else to say that. If you are one of the people trying to look for a reason as to not defend Tulsi, if you're one of those people looking for a reason as to why your candidate didn't defend Tulsi, if you're one of those people, who is trying to twist your brain into critiquing something Tulsi said about Hillary Clinton just so you can feel better that your candidate didn't defend Tulsi. You, you, you look ridiculous. You look ridiculous because even Donald Trump is smart enough to realize, bro, she got 280,000 likes on this tweet. She's not even the president. I only get that many likes. What the hell? You said she got how many followers since then? And her fundraising numbers looking like what? Hey, Tulsi, I'm right there. How many of my supporters have liked that status? How many of them follow? How many of us follow each other? They, you said fifty thousand of them like that status? Oh hell no. Nah. Hey, hey, where my where my phone at? Hey, hey, T Tulsi, I support you too. I support you too. Hey, supporters. Hey, don't vote for Tulsi. I also remember Crooked Hillary. Ha ha, lock her up. Ha, remember, lock her up. We was we had some good times when I was screaming lock her up. Remember that. Yeah, don't vote for Tulsi, please. I support what she did too, and I call Hillary Cricket all the time. Even Donald Trump is smart enough to know when sometimes you got to play the game. And of course, you shouldn't be only, uh, uh, you shouldn't only be defending Tulsi just to play the game. But if your reason for not defending Tulsi is because you're playing the game, then that, that's stupid. It's a stupid move. Like there was nothing to lose from endorsing, or not endorsing, excuse me, from defending Julian Assange. There was nothing to lose from defending Chelsea Manning. 
But in this situation, you're talking about the bane of the Democratic Party's existence at this point, which is Hillary Clinton, and the dove in white who stuck up or stood up to her. It's not a competition and it's a no-brainer. Either you have integrity or you don't in this particular situation, or you're intelligent or you're, strate you're strategic or you're not. You might think you're being strategic by staying quiet, but you're not. It's a bad strategy. Just saying. Love to know what your thoughts are about this. Leave a like, comment, share, and always remember more than anything else, people. Find your balance. Peace.